every day, not just working day, starts with a good cup of coffee. If you need to make one for yourself, please pause this video and let's get started. I hope you enjoy this day with me. I'm going to take you through some of my meeting structure, how I prepare for these meetings, what I tend to do in the background when I'm outside meetings, what this role is all about as well. I think that's quite important to paint a picture because I know many people are interested in working in human resources and eventually becoming an HR business partner. So hopefully you will learn a lot from this because I'm going to take you through some of the structures and what I tend to put in place in order for me to perform as effectively and efficiently as I can. Hi all, my name is Sanya. I'm a law graduate and HR professional in England. In this channel, we pretty much explore everything they don't teach us in school. For today's video, I'm going to take you through my usual working day as a senior HR business partner, which I do hope you enjoy and find informative. Just before we get started, I would like to briefly mention and give you a bit more information as to what this role is all about. The HR business partner role works closely with allocated portfolios and senior leadership teams. This role supports normally a number of executive leads or at least one and department heads and their senior leadership teams. As an HR business partner allocated to your teams and portfolios, you are a permanent member of their senior leadership team, which means you've got a seat at the table and you can help them shape and form business strategies and people side of things that you can actually do for them as a consultant, as a bit of a specialist and expert when it comes to human resources. This role pretty much requires you to be that trusted advisor and a consultant to your senior leadership team. Remember, you are a permanent member of their senior leadership team, so you are constantly copied into relevant stuff and you do need to know what's happening within the business and wider organization. Any external factors that may have an impact on them is quite important for you to be able to strategically advise them as to how they can manage some of these challenges and bridge some of the gaps that may appear. From an HR point of view, HR business partners are absolutely fundamental when it comes to shaping people plans, diversity and inclusion plans, well-being, workforce, resource plans. And at the end of the day, every business needs people to be present and deliver whatever they need to do for the business in order for the business to move ahead. So this role is a key part when it comes to advising, guiding, coaching, giving some options from best case scenario to worst case scenario in order for them to make those informed decisions. This role also requires you to be a critical friend and critical thinker. So you are there as their eyes and ears as to what else is happening across the board to be able to remind them and give them some insights as to how they could tackle some of their challenges. It's also quite important, I certainly do quite a lot of this in my role, to make sure they're not operating in silos, which can often happen in big organization where infrastructure is really big, where you have lots of people working together, but sometimes occasionally they can end up working in silos and not really talk to each other. So I often tend to scan what's happening across the organization just to be able to make those informed decisions and give them some ideas as to what they need to do in order for them to be prepared to tackle those challenges. I find in a nutshell that this role is all about managing stakeholders, knowing what's happening, being that critical friend, critical advisor, trusted advisor. These are the skills that you absolutely have to have or at least be ready to have if you want to successfully perform in this role. It's quite important for this role to also form views and have your opinion on things as to how they can tackle something. After all, you are deemed as an expert, part of their senior leadership teams, so feel free to express your views as to how they could tackle something. You will be highly appreciated by the team and most definitely they'll be taking some of this into consideration. My working day normally starts around 9am. I tend to avoid having meetings earlier than this because I have a little boy and I often have to take him to school, which starts at nine o'clock. By the time I come back home, it's around quarter past nine. Luckily, the school is quite close to our home, so that drop off and pick up 
tends to be fairly quick within 15 minutes. So this is when my working day really starts. I support five departments at the moment, which all belong to one portfolio, but I do have three executive leads I work with closely. I attend senior leadership team meetings on a weekly basis. As I have five departments, there is at least one senior leadership team meeting I need to attend on a daily basis. And in terms of how long I spend at these meetings, they can be anything between 45 to 60 minutes to up to two hours. It does depend on what's going on that week or that month for that business area. People are always on agenda at senior leadership team meetings. There is always a reference to people plans, diversity and inclusion, well-being, organizational design, skill set, attendance, sickness, employee relations, and there is quite a lot of data that tends to be supplied that I need to work with and analyze in order to predict as to what's going to happen for the following quarter. What do we need to put in place now to prevent any of those future issues cropping up just to be ahead of the game. After senior leadership team meetings, I tend to have a couple of one-to-ones with my department heads and or executive leads. It does depend on, again, what's going on that week or that month, but I tend to have those on a regular basis just to make sure I understand what they're concerned about, any asks they have of me, and also it's an opportunity for me to bring to the table other topics that do require them knowing what's going on, where I do ask them about their views and opinions on things, and then what sort of we need to put in place when it comes to taking those further to senior leadership teams for a wider discussion. It's probably by now midday, and it's time to have potentially another cup of coffee or tea and lunch. When I'm not in meetings, I'm most definitely actioning everything I promised I would do. There is nothing worse than you saying you're going to pick up something, then you don't do it. I think it's quite important for you to deliver on your promise. If you can't do something, please be honest with your teams to manage their expectations because that you will have to give an update at next meeting. So it's best to manage those expectations up front. I tend to gather quite a lot of actions. And then if I can't do them physically, I explain as to who can pick it up and support available in the background. I tend to create quite a lot of documents when it comes to talent management. I draft and lead on people business cases. I give my views. I tend to look at lots of data, HR data, in order to analyze and see if there are any gaps or trends going on in order to prevent any future or bigger issues especially when it comes to employee relations. I would also like to add that I'm a generalist HR person. I have chosen not to specialize in any area. And often in HR world, you will see specialist in reward, specialist in well-being, specialist in employment relations. I am not ready to specialize in anything just as yet. I actually like knowing what's happening across all HR specialist areas because it's quite important for me to be up to date with things. And then later on down the line, I think I may specialize in organizational design and career mapping because I'm really passionate about, and of course, talent management comes with that piece as well. How I prepare for meetings, and this is so important for you to feel comfortable and confident when it comes to attending these meetings and when certain actions get discussed, your name comes up, you want to be in a position to feel comfortable and you are on top of that action, you know what's going on. If you aren't and you do not manage your meetings proactively, then people are going to quickly pick up on that. So it's quite important for you to be honest. If there is something you do not know or didn't do, make sure that you say that as opposed to just come up with different excuses or try to give answers that may not be fully honest. People are really quickly going to pick up on that. So in order for you to manage and maintain your credibility, always be honest with your departments you support. For me personally, there is nothing worse than turning up at work on Monday when you actually didn't do a lot. And then you have to start quickly from day one. I like turning up at work 
on Monday and having my coffee, just quickly double checking where I am with things and just moving on because I am up to date. So that's just a bit of a tip for you just to be mindful for your own confidence and coming across as organized as I like to be. I just like to be in control when it comes to these things, especially if you need to call someone, people may not be around on the day and you don't want to have your Mondays stressing about updates and actions you need to give an update on. In order for me to do this as proactively as I like it, I tend to call a number of support functions who work with me and are located to my departments. I tend to have a conversation with finance, HR specialist teams for additional queries that are coming from my department and portfolio and then I am pretty much good to go when I start attending my meetings for the following week. I try not to have meetings with many people. I am really big on picking up a phone call and having that five to ten minute conversation about something. I personally try to avoid having meetings unless I really, really have to go to those such as senior leadership team meetings because they're quite important to have. But any other meeting that I know in the past I would go to and then after a meeting you normally feel why did I even attend this meeting, what was the value, uh, what was my contribution. I have started to just call people even when someone sends me a, a meeting invite I straight away challenge that and say is this just a quick phone call can you have a phone call instead and that's how I get rid of those meetings as well so feel free to challenge these invites you get invited to it's nice to be invited to things but at the same time you do need to protect your time and diary for thinking doing things pulling things together that is so important for your own mindset and mental health because you do need to have capacity to do other things. There is nothing worse when you're in back-to-back -back meetings all day long. Sometimes people struggle with toilet breaks or lunch breaks, which is not really healthy for anyone. So if you can find a way to balance both, that would be fantastic, or at least have one or two days just back-to-back -back with appropriate breaks, that would, that's so important. But have a day or a couple of days with no meetings at all, so you actually get to do some thinking, you complete all of your actions and delegate further because all of us work in some teams so that delegation piece is really important and with delegation for me as I now manage a couple of people I think it's not about you owning everything and wanting to do everything because there is a particular style and how you pull together information which we are all proud of but always think about other people you work with for their own development I think that's something I'm really big on sharing what I know, including them in conversations, asking for their opinions and views, and giving them projects and pieces of work to lead on. A helps me, but at the same time, it helps another person when it comes to their own development, especially if I know they're quite keen to be an HR business partner. There is nothing better for me knowing that, that they want to be included, and then I continue to share quite a lot more with them, which looks really good on their CV and when they go for job interviews. And we have come to the end of my working day. It's time to go and pick up Alexander, time to be ready for another day, double check what I need to do for the following week and have those phone conversations where needed. My working style is very organizing working style. So I know if I organize as much as I can up front, I will come across structured, confident, I'll be up to date, I'll be ready to give those answers and views and suggest next steps really quickly. So there is a lot of time you, you have to invest in this, but I'm trying to prevent that awkward moment or someone asks me about something and I'm not sure. But I just want to reassure you, if someone does ask you about something and you do not know, just say, I don't know, I will make sure I research further and I will come back with an update. That's all you need to do. So saying, I don't know, I miss that or I will speak to so and so, it's just as fine. Just basically contract with the area and say, I'll come back to you once I've done my research and give you my updates in a day or two or next week. And just leave it at that and that's just as sufficient. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you have friends and family members 
who are thinking about working in HR and want to understand what HR structure is all about, how you can progress in HR world, please let me know. I'm happy to answer any questions that they may have or you may have. I love having these conversations. These are one of my favorite topics to talk about, about how we develop ourselves, how we come across, how we prepare for some strange situations. I love a good challenge. I love a good conversation. So please encourage those people to to contact me, including yourself, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.